Welcome to the Story Fulfilled podcast, where we deep dive into how each character and story in the Bible come together to fulfill the story of God. I'm Fletcher. I'm Abby. And I'm Jay. And today's story is about David's BFF, Jonathan. <laughs> BFF. It just doesn't do, quite sound the same when it comes those, from you. <laughs> is that one of those terms that needs to be uh, there? Do we have listeners that don't know? Like, I doubt potentially. it. Potentially. Yeah. We do have a couple people over 65. Best friend forever. That's right. BFF. I'm glad Jay said that. <laughs> that's very funny. <laughs> so that brings up a question, right? We love to do the questions each week. So, which person from the Bible would you want as a BFF? BFF, not just a best friend, a best, best friend, friend forever. forever. Best friends for life. Oh, BFFL. 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 Yes. Yeah. Let's stick with BFF. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I mean, for our character today, it was, <laughs> it was for life, though. Uh, yeah. so. And their son's lives. Yeah. Hmm. All right. All right. Okay. Go ahead, Abby. <laughs> oh, I don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Then I go ahead, Jay. I'm thinking. Yeah. Who has one ready? <laughs> oh, why did? Okay. Well, I I quipped as be just before we started recording <laughs> about a best friend for ever, and and then we were like, oh, you know, it's actually not a bad one. So <laughs> I chose Balaam's donkey <laughs> because he well he worked very hard to make sure that Balaam wouldn't do what was wrong. <laughs> he saw God, the like Balaam's donkey actually recognized the presence of the Lord. For those sorry, who, for those who don't know the story, Balaam's donkey <laughs> talked to him, yeah, and yelled at him. Yeah, yeah. we'll tell that like with an actual sure, voice, but with a I real mean, voice. What a what a sidekick helper, right? I know. It's so good. It's like Shrek. So good. Yeah, Shrek and donkey. Yeah. So was and his so, voice? And that was the question, right? Would he would he be voiced at? Well, here's the thing: if he was my BFF, he wouldn't be voiced by anyone other than himself. But uh. just for picturing it, <laughs> he'd be Eddie voiced Murphy. by Eddie Murphy, Eddie of Murphy. course. Yeah, yeah. There we morning. go. That's good. We have a waffles. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, best. He'd be great because he recognizes God's presence, and he's also truthful. He's like. Hey, you shouldn't be hitting me. He'd call you I've out. never done anything wrong to you, and you're hitting me, and that's not cool. And yeah, hmm. Balaam's donkey, BFF. Okay, that's a good one. Do you have one, Fletcher? Sure, I'll great. go. I'm going to pick uh, Baruch, who we're actually talking about this season. <laughs> but he kind of just follows uh, Jeremiah around and writes down everything he does. And, mm-hmm. and you'd want someone to follow you yeah, around and write yeah, down really Fletcher? Exactly, because I, I, don't, don't I can't remember anything that I say. Oh and I'd be like, oh, that was really funny. Write that down, Baruch. <laughs> I gotta remember because I won't remember. That's funny. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Go I don't know if you Luke. really want someone to write down everything. Maybe you've not, done, Fletcher. Right? Fletcher, this, this I've heard no you sense. say some things that I don't think you want recorded. <laughs> oh man! I will stand by what I say. I I'm asked our cousin chat for um, pictures of Fletcher recently, Uh-oh. and I had to actually specify, please make them G-rated, <laughs> just because well, of some be of the stuff Fletcher's been <laughs> doing. He's only recording what he says, not right. what he looks Do what like I say, not what I do. <laughs> there you go. Oh, gosh. Okay. Okay. And this may not actually be the person, but I'm going to go with Luke because I kind of, I really like his writing style and he was alive during the parts that I think I would want to see the most okay. because it was like, but doesn't he the, come here? The end of what? You don't go when he goes. He comes oh, I don't you. know. But I would want to talk to him about You'd like what I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like he was all the early church stuff, right? Yeah. Like and that is my favorite part and of the Bible. Journeys with Paul, like ship yeah. So and I think Piper I'm going to go with Luke and yeah. he's a doctor. Dr. Luke. Dr. Yeah. Luke. So Historian Luke. He sounds fun. He's it's, a good writer. It's never a bad idea to have a doctor as a BFF. No, no it's no. not. Or a donkey. Or a donkey. <laughs> or a donkey. <laughs> If you can't have a doctor, have a donkey. That's right. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. So as always, painful. we'd love to hear your feedback. And uh, one of the ways that you can give us your feedback is at story at bfmc.org. The other way, though, that you can give feedback is we love throwing some of this stuff out on Instagram. Ooh, so whoop. search out the Story Fulfilled podcast on Instagram and be sure to interact you get to see with what we look like in our posts. Well, mostly Fletcher. And, oh, yeah, mostly uh, me. <laughs> Abby refuses to post her own pictures on there, but I'm sure we'll get some on right. eventually. Maybe you should hit up that cousin chat for various <laughs> pictures of Abby. I don't have access to the Instagram. That's the only problem. I'll have to hack uh, it. Abby has the control. I have That's the right. power. All right, so actually, if we want to actually start the topic, last week we talked about the time of the judges. There's no king in Israel. 
But we're jumping ahead about 200 years to the very end of the time of the judges. It's about 200 years. Um, we talked about last season Samuel, who was the last judge, and he was asked by the people to get a king for Israel. So God anointed a man named Saul to be king of Israel, and that's kind of where we start today's episode. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, we're talking about his son, Jonathan, who was born uh, about 1060 BC and dies around 1070 BC. So if you're a mathematician, you're noticing not 1010 not 1010 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. you, you, you said 1070 that would have been oh, negative yeah. 10 that years <laughs> yes that would have been even less your math is good <laughs> <laughs> he's never born and he that's, was dead for 10 years there's right. a reason jay's a youth pastor that is true so uh so but he only lived about 50 years <laughs> yeah, uh, is what that. we're taking that's away from this so um and so the story takes place during the reign of the first king of israel who, as we said, is Saul, who is the father of Jonathan. And this is around the time that Assyria collapses from attacks from the Arameans uh, and the, the Babylonians. And this was actually around 1070, <laughs> so we don't have to worry about that negative math there. Um, and it's the end of the Remesid dynasty in Egypt, which I'm probably mispronouncing, <laughs> um, but it's, we the, there. it's the end of that <laughs> dynasty. Uh, in Egypt, and and so there's actually not much that's actually going on in the ancient Near East. This is like there's a lot of demise of empires happening, and mm-hmm. enter Israel. Israel. Yeah. Israel. There we go. So well, Jonathan is not just one story. He has a couple stories. He is throughout two books of the Bible, First and Second Samuel. So obviously he has a couple things. So geography isn't super straightforward. Um, there's a couple different places. So the first one is Gibeah in Benjamin. So Geba, um, where, some, where he was summoned to join Saul at Gilgal. Now, Gibeah is also the location of one of the, the most grotesque sto- stories in the Bible. So if you have read the last chapter of Judges um, with Levite and his concubine, then that is also where that happens. It's a modern day place. It's called Tal al Ful, and it's about eight kilometers north of Jerusalem. Mm. So Geba, which is where um, Jonathan is summoned to join his dad, is just east of Gibeah. Um, Gilgal is on the eastern border of Jericho, which is near the Jordan River. And this is an important biblical site, as it's also the place where God split the river for Joshua and the Israelites to pass. Ooh, did we talk yeah. about that? No, I don't think we have. We no, haven't we talked haven't. about Joshua. So that's Gilgal. We'll talk more about it eventually, I'm sure. Um, so Jonathan had to cross a pass between the cliffs of Bozes and Sena, which one was facing north towards Michmash and the other faced south towards Geba. So Michmash was northeast of Geba on the road to Jerusalem. Um, and then and last place that we kind of see uh, where, oh, two, sorry, two more places where do we see Jonathan. Um, one is the Horesh in the desert of Ziph which is probably a place, I'm going to butcher this name, guys, <laughs> um, <laughs> Kerbet Koreza, um, which is also very close, like super close, four kilometers away from the Valley of Ella, which is where David fought Goliath, which is pretty cool. Mm. And then finally, Jonathan dies on Mount Gilboa fighting the Philistines, which is about 47 kilometers south of the Sea of Galilee. Can we get so. a map for that in the show notes? Yeah, I'll Holy try my best. Cow, yeah. But yeah. Cuz yeah, there's so many places, so many names and you're just reading the chapters and you're like, I don't where know where is this, this is. Yeah. I don't know where this is. This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's That's actually not that like this area. It's not that big of a region mm-hmm. that he, mm-hmm. that Jonathan hangs out in. Yeah. Um, that really so. is though like maps in your Bible become oh, very handy when, when you want to understand just anything. Exactly what's going on. It says, here. "Oh, somebody traveled to this place." And right. you're like, "Is that quick journey right. is that yeah, like yeah. what is that actually days? Yeah. is that yeah. yeah yeah well it's even cool when you can look at things and be like oh yeah jonathan went to gilgal and that's where joshua was too and mm-hmm. see right. like where the repeat the places is in the yeah. bible yeah. so yeah so let's get into it first story is jonathan's kind of coming not coming of age but <laughs> coming of fame <laughs> to israel right so Saul is the king in Israel, and Jonathan is his son. And their biggest problem is the Philistines, when they live on the, the Mediterranean coast. And the, they're called the Plains of Philistine. And it's just west of Israel, and they're their biggest problems. And they have lots of chariots, planes, chariots, flat ground. They yeah. work really well in that kind of Which area. Which we talked a little bit about chariots and last that, week. Now they're yeah. like, they've got a lot more this yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, so Jonathan fights the Philistines in this battle, and he has a big victory at Geba, which Abby was talking about. Um, 
And Saul kind of takes credit for it, and then he rallies the people to join him to fight the Philistines. Mm. And then the Philistines hear of this, um, so they muster a massive army, 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen. And it says, you know, they were like the sand on the seashore. There was so many of them. Right. So that's a big army. That's not a small (laughs) army. No, (laughs) even in today's standard. So the Israelites ended up having to hide in caves and in cisterns just to hide from the the Philistines. So they're cisterns. Yeah, anywhere they could. Caves, cisterns. Why don't you explain to the audience what a cistern is? It's a hole with water. (laughs) Yeah, or like a large (laughs) clay pot, right? Underground, yeah. Yeah, and so they'd just be jumping into holes. Just anything to get out of the way. Yeah. So Jonathan decides that he's going to attack one of the Philistine garrisons, and he's not going to tell his father about this. So him and 600 men sneak through these crags, which is the the cliffs that Abby was talking about, Mm -hmm. and they sneak through it up into Michmash, where the Philistines were. And as they approach, Jonathan Jonathan tells his armor bearer, you know, let's go talk to these uncircumcised men. (laughs) And he comes up with this plan. He goes, if the men see us and they say, wait there, let us come to you, then we'll let them come over to us and we won't attack. But if they tell us to go over to them, then God is with us and he has given, a, given them into our hands and we'll attack them. Right. So they climb out of this crag, out of these cliffs, and show themselves. And the Philistines call them over and say, oh, there's some Hebrews crawling out of their caves and their <laughs> holes. Yeah. So the, the Philistines know, you know they have the advantage. So Jonathan and his armor bearer, Attack, because that was their plan, right? Mm. If they get called over. So they get called over, and they attack. And it says that they kill 20 men in this first strike, in this first battle. Just the two of them. Just two of them. That's impressive. And actually, the the people in this area, in the garrison, they start freaking out. They start panicking, and the the earth starts to quake. Yeah. Um, So stuff's going down at this battle. Everybody's (laughs) freaking out. So in the distance, Saul notices that there's this big battle going on, a big commotion. Uh, and he's like, wait a minute, we don't have any men over there. What's going on? So right. he starts to count everybody up. And he goes, oh, Jonathan's men aren't here. Yeah, he realizes that 600 people <laughs> secretly his own men off. Off. Like, And th- not even noticed. just 600 people, but his son. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, the commander's like? son. So Saul's like, well, let's go. He brings the ark. He brings his army into battle. And when they get there. He sees Philistines fighting themselves. He sees Israelites, or Hebrews, sorry, that were living with the Philistines, killing Philistines for them. He sees Hebrews oh, fighting. Man. It's a mess. Everybody's fighting each other. And they end up winning this massive battle. Right. So as they chase the Philistines, Saul, the king, makes this vow. You know, curse it is the man that eats before the evening until we're done chasing our enemies. What a ridiculous what, yeah. vow, what, like, honestly. Why? Like, if you're in <laughs> battle and you're hungry... Have a snack. Probably a good idea. Wouldn't you need yeah. to, like you need to eat to yeah. fight. Yeah. yeah. Saul, what are you thinking? <laughs> it kind of so it kind of reminds me of Hitler in World War II trying to push his soldiers further into Russia without providing. Them. Yeah. We're gonna keep chasing them oh into Russia. God. You don't. It need doesn't a, matter that you don't it's need winter. winter boots. Exactly. No. <laughs> no why? why? So it's not a it's not a wise decision. No. Wow. So they're walking through these woods chasing these Philistines, and Jonathan, Saul's son finds this honey oh who can't resist who right? can resist some, a nice honey so he takes what are his you, spear. Winnie the Pooh? i guess so <laughs> jonathan was. he takes his spear dips it and takes a lick and it says his eyes are brightened and he's and he's sustained by this right <laughs> and then the men tell jonathan about his father's orders saying you know cursed is the man and he goes well that's that's dumb <laughs> you know look at me i'm all refreshed now and look at you guys all yeah. starving yeah you know that's dumb why wouldn't why wouldn't we eat so later on, Saul's trying to discern God's will for the, for the army, whether to keep chasing them or, or what to do. And he can't. So they cast lots to see who did something wrong. Mm. This is the weird part is that they cast lots and they figure out that Jonathan had eaten honey. Right. So Saul, keeping good on his promise, puts or wants to put Jonathan to death. Right. And then wait a second, wait a second. Yeah. Can you imagine being put to death for eating honey? Like out of all the things you By could your have own eaten, father. Honey though. Like there's well, so many better foods you could have had. <laughs> well, I, I like honey though. Honey I, but I, enough to I'd die. Go down for well, well he didn't know. So Jonathan didn't know that his father gave the order. That's the that's the big thing. So right. Jonathan is now condemned to die and he goes, I just ate a little bit of honey. It's right. not a big deal. Oh. And then all the people, Jonathan has just won this great battle. He's like the best he's the coolest 
They say, no, 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 we're not going to kill Jonathan. He's just won this great battle. You're going to put him to death over yeah. some honey. Yeah. So they stop Saul from killing him, and they, they end up defending him. Yeah, which actually, like to your point, Abby, um, I mean, I know about you were kind of making jest <laughs> about uh, eating honey being the reason for your death, but the reason that he would have been put to death is because his dad made a stupid vow, well, yeah. a harsh, rash, stupid vow that and he didn't even know about it right but it was it was all because his his dad needed to push on push on yeah. and assert his authority in some way that he actually didn't have in this situation mm-hmm. um and so yeah it that's he's ridiculous yeah we actually see Jonathan He's not the only yeah. father sorry he's not the only father in the bible that makes right. a bad vow either in remember the judges, we had the that um, guy that a- goes and he, back he and the next his daughter that comes out of the tent yeah. Yeah. needs to be put to death and it's his daughter you think because he thought it would be like a chicken like what the heck of course <laughs> if someone greets you like if you haven't been home yeah. for a while of course it's going to be your kid yeah. anyways because so yeah didn't he make father. a promise to say you know god if you give me this then yeah. whatever comes out mm-hmm. of my tent it's I'll very similar to, yeah. to what well, Saul yeah, did yeah exactly and and we actually see jonathan calling out his father for the bad command and i was reading up on it it's kind of like he knew that this was just based on his own pride, based on his own, you know, will, as opposed to a divine inspiration by God to make this command. Right. So he calls his father out, which I, I which I like. And we see that contrast way. too, where Jonathan in battle says, "If if this happens, then we take this as a sign that God is with us." Um, and you know, and if this happens, then we'll just we'll hold back. Yeah. Whereas Saul kind of just decided what should happen yeah and he made this he also made this vow without like god asking him to do anything Mm -hmm. it's like saying i'm gonna go vegan because it's better for my health (laughs) but like my doctor doesn't say it and nobody in my life is telling me to like that's just it's not a good way reason if you're listening right right now and you've gone vegan because you believe it's better for your health that we don't cast judgment on you (laughs) (laughs) i'm not vegan either (laughs) just for the record (laughs) but meat's good meat's all right anyway Uh, and honey <laughs> honey is, is honey vegan? I'm honey not sure. is no, not, not vegan. No. What if it's just it's donated animals? by the bees? And no. you, donated you put a by little the bowl bees. underneath <laughs> the, the nest and it drops. Oh so, my gosh. yeah, like you said, Jonathan is pretty wise with his judgment as to God's will. He he makes he lets God determine what he's going to do right. next instead of just being brash and making his own decisions, like we see Saul do, yeah. and we see Saul do it. He makes sacrifices without waiting for Samuel, like two chapters right. from now. Now we do, uh, as we talked a little bit before we started recording, there is a little bit of a tension here mm-hmm. because he he is behaving as the godly person, but he he is disobeying his mm-hmm. father as well, just in even sneaking off and entering into battle, uh, which wasn't sanctioned, if you will, uh, by his father. And so we do have to kind of wrestle with that. But what we what we seem to uncover through the reading of the text is that um, he did so because he had a connection with God and he, he saw the victory that God wanted to give to them and step forward in that. I think one of the takeaways that I've kind of had is, is there's two sides to it being honoring your leadership and honoring the people in charge of you, but also being willing to call out something that you think is yeah. wrong. So yeah. there's a, there's a double sided coin of yes, respect your your leaders and respect your authority but also if they're doing something wrong you kind of have to be able to call something out right which also requires a deep connection with the lord Mm -hmm. to know because it wasn't himself doing it he's the one who was following god in this situation which kind of gives you more wisdom (laughs) yeah (laughs) honor your father and mother kids that's right yep so story number two gets interesting so we know this man named David. He's pretty famous. We talked about him a lot in season one. <laughs> little we little had a whole little episode little. about him. Two. Season two episodes. Two episodes yeah. about yeah. David. There you go. Yeah. So Jonathan meets David right after David kills Goliath, the famous story. Mm. We haven't talked about and it. And we talked about it. was very close. Remember where it was? The Valley of Ella. Right. That's oh, right. the same location. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So David's going to talk to King Saul about this victory that, that he just got with killing Goliath. And as soon as David and Jonathan meet, they were like there was like a bond between them, and mm. it says the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David. Right, and they're like instant friends, best friends. And Jonathan makes a pact with David, and you know, gives him his armor and his sword and his robe, and they become best friends. And they right. swear to each other that they will 
be friends and be at peace with each Which other. Which is also, um, Jonathan is recognizing the kingship of mm-hmm. David as well because it's his. It's actually Jonathan's to to have he's the to prince. receive next. He's, he's the next in line to be the king. Um, and he is saying to David, you are the king. He's recognizing yeah. that in him. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So these two are really close friends. And because of the promise that Jonathan has made to David, it kind of makes for an awkward relationship with David and his father. Who doesn't want to let go of his kingship? Exactly. So we talked about Saul last season. And if you want to hear what happens, you can go listen to episode eight. But Saul gets very jealous of David and mm. tries to kill him on several occasions. Yep. And then Jonathan sitting here, you know, on one hand, it's his father, the king. And on the other hand, it's his best friend, who's the rightful king. Yeah. So Jonathan acts as this kind of mediator and this peacemaker between them. And he even had to dodge a couple spears right. in the process. Right, yeah. At one point, David, Saul is like, David hasn't done anything wrong. He's, he's honoring you. And Saul throws a spear at, his, yeah. at yeah. him. So yeah. it's, a, it's a precarious position to be in, I'm sure. So... You can go listen to the, the other episodes. We kind of talk about the relationship between David and Saul. Eventually, the, the relationship between Saul and David grows so ten, tense that David has to leave, and they know this. Um, and David has to go, and he has to leave Israel. Right. So he meets with his best friend, Jonathan, and while they're doing that, in the sight of the Lord, they reaffirm their friendship, and, and they say that they will be peaceful between each other and between their children right. forever. Right. Yeah. So this friendship is something that they have kindled and then now is going to extend beyond just them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it does. To a nice little guy named Mephibosheth. You, later you on. Did you get again. it wrong? I don't know. No, I got it right. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> so now the last part of Jonathan's life is kind of a sad one, actually. So David is gone and Saul is still king, but he's losing it. The mm. spirit of the Lord has left him and he's kind of desperate to find out what God wants. Right. Saul goes to see a medium and wants to talk to Samuel, who has died. And right. I think we talk about this as well in the Saul episode. Just so you, in case you want, that's, there's a whole lot that in that that you shouldn't do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> but this episode's not about Saul, so no. that's why we're right. not so going anyway, into we'll, it. So anyway, we'll continue. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that, I'm sure, at some point in, in more. But So Samuel tells Saul that tomorrow you and your sons will be handed over to the Philistines. Mm -hmm. So while the Philistines are attacking Israel, they close in on Saul and his sons and they on the Mount of Gilboa, Gilboa, which Abby talked about. I I almost didn't pronounce it there Mm -hmm. and and killed them. And Saul is wounded by an arrow and falls on his own sword to prevent capture from the Philistines. So they are defeated in battle, Mm -hmm. just like Samuel said. Right. And that's the end of Jonathan. And he dies in battle there with his father. With it is father. sad, sad demise to go yeah. down with his misguided father. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's kind of cool, too, because we talk about like we, we mentioned a little bit about how was it disrespect for his father and the fact that right. he stayed with his father. And mm-hmm. so it shows that he did have respect for his yeah. father. Yeah. He recognized David as king, but he had respect for his and he father. stayed with his father yeah. till the very end. He didn't yeah. And yeah. So yeah. yeah. That's cool. I guess, yeah, he could have left with David. Eh? He yeah. could have yeah. gone with him and, and followed him into the end. But no, he stayed with his father and fought with him Yeah, yeah. in battle. Yeah. Neat. So, like Abby was saying, the, the Mephibosheth, which I can't pronounce, but you Abby gets it, it right sometime it. every time. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow every time she gets it right. Thanks, Ends Adventures up living to Odyssey. up to his promise because a, a bunch of, a couple of years later, um, David is now king and they meet his son. And they, David's looking for all the sons of Saul. And he's like, look, I want to bless them because he is the king and, and in the name of my friend, Jonathan. Right. So Mephibosheth, who is a cripple, um, is brought to David and David actually gives his family land back. And he, and he says that you'll always be able to eat at my table. So he honors Jonathan's son by letting him stay with him and giving his land back to him right. and his family. He honors right. a good so vow. What a good guy. Yeah. yeah. And not a good guy in, in all yeah. sorts of ways. Well, yeah. But in this story, he's a good guy. So yeah, for sure. That. And we, I mean, we have a whole lot of that throughout the Bible. And yeah, there are people who we know as very good. And then a closer examination of their life, we're like, ah, maybe yeah. not the, yeah. the yep. best. Exactly. But so God uses them. God uses them. Absolutely. People. Always. So before you answer the question, <laughs> what is, how does the story of Jonathan and his life contribute to the overall story of God throughout the Bible? Well, I, the one thing 
right now that I'm that I'm thinking of because I couldn't think of anything before. What's popping is is honoring of your vows. So mm-hmm. Jonathan made a lot of promises both to his father, I'm sure, to and to mm-hmm. David, mm-hmm. and he honored them to the very end, and he right. constantly honored it. And that kind of reminds us that you know God is gonna honor. He's made a ton of promises to us, and he is mm-hmm. faithful to right. to carry those out. A- and I think what we see in that too is that honoring how important that is it's so important and it's not easy Mm -hmm. it puts us sometimes in difficult situations where um it requires discernment in order to properly um navigate those situations that we Mm -hmm. find ourselves in and so um but it's good for us to do all that we can to honor uh the the vows that that we make Mm -hmm. and i mean we're instructed um through uh through James, not to make vows actually because and of so how yeah important they they are right because the the words that we say need to carry weight and, mm-hmm. and they need to mean something and so um, yeah it's very important for us to choose our words wisely and to be sure of the things that we make promises about. Yeah, I think yeah. a lot of the story also has to do with uh, friendship and the importance mm-hmm. of it or the the depth that it can be and what that means hmm. with relationships because friendship is not something that you hear like marriage is it's not the same no right and it's something that we do see here in the book and in the chapters it says jonathan and david souls were knitted together there they were they were mi- bosom friends they were yeah. bosom like they were best mm-hmm. friends right and that means something that's yeah. not mm-hmm. just some made up term. Like there's there's honor and meaning in that that Would, I think we could talk about. Yeah, and I think like oftentimes um, in uh, the the church as a not just not just our church, the church, mm-hmm. <laughs> universal, um, we make a big deal of marriage and family, um, but I think we fail to recognize the importance of friendship uh, because mm-hmm. not everybody is actually called to marriage and family in that context, mm-hmm. but it's so important for us in our walk with Jesus to have good, strong friendships, people that are going to speak truth in our lives, people who are going to point us to Jesus, people who are going to pray with us and for us through the difficult situations that mm-hmm. we find ourselves in. And so um, it's so important for us to surround ourselves with good, solid friendships and be good friends in return as well nice all right what do you think abby i think you guys did a great job answering that question <laughs> you Very say that good. every week i don't Aww. she's never not said that <laughs> so well, maybe she's lying maybe or she's friend. never she's never or posted herself right, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right well that is the end of our episode for today thanks for joining us we will see you next week thanks for listening bye for now <laughs>